Hey guys, Mr. Burns here again. Another video here on uh, perpendicular lines. Uh, so the idea behind perpendicular lines is that if you notice here, I've got uh, one line here, graph, and another line, and they meet at a 90 degree angle. So when uh, perpendicular lines But what's going on with their slopes? So I thought I might just find the slope of these two lines really quickly. So I look at this guy. My run is 2. My rise is 1. So if you remember very simply, slope is rise over run. So 1 over 2. So that's the slope of this guy. But if I look at this one, i got to go left and up. So that's going to be my run is negative 1 and my rise is 2. So in this case, my my slope is going to be one uh, two over negative one, which is just negative two. So what you know? So let me write out that word for you: a negative reciprocals. Make sure I spell it correctly. So negative reciprocal. So all a negative reciprocal is, if we start out with a number, let's just choose a different example. So let's say three. Then if the lines are perpendicular, then they're negative reciprocals. So all we do is flip the fraction, so it becomes 1 over 3, or if it was 2 over 3, it becomes 3 over 2, and we make it negative. So they're negative reciprocals. So if it goes from here to here. So if we have the slope of one of these lines, we know the slope of the other. Just by knowing that, we can use this fact right here. Okay. So let's put it in action. Try a couple of examples. So let's Let's see what this guy says. So a line is perpendicular to uh, y is equal to 4x plus, or sorry, minus 3, and passes the point four, uh, 3, 4. Find the equation of the line. So if you look at this guy, this guy is in y equals mx plus b form. y equals mx plus b form. We've been doing this guy steady for the last three years. So the slope is 4. So the slope of the line that's of this guy is 4. Now we're, we're looking at it's perpendicular to this. We need to recognize negative reciprocal. So our new slope is, well, it's going to be negative because this guy's positive, and we flip it over. So 1 over 4. All right, so we have y is equal to negative 1 over 4, x. So we still doesn't, don't know what our uh, y-intercept is, our b. So we use this guy, uh, 3, 4. So we'll put this guy here, negative Four times three plus b. So I have four is equal to negative three over four plus b. Or b is equal to four plus three over four. I gotta find a common denominator, so common denominator is gonna be four. So this is gonna be sixteen over four plus 3 over 4, which equals 19 over 4. So now that the equation of my new line is y is equal to negative 1 over 4, x plus 19 over 4. So that's the equation of my line, just like that. All right, so that's a typical uh, multiple example. As soon as you read the word perpendicular in a problem, you should be thinking negative reciprocal slopes. That's the key word for, with, with uh, perpendicular lines. All right, let's try this one. So this is a coordinate group. What's our use of in the test? So let's see what it says. So given triangle ABC, you show using coordinate geometry, so that means slope formula, midpoint formula, distance formula, to prove BD, so this guy right here, is a perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular means that there's a 90 degree angle, so let's draw a 90 degree angle there. And bisector means that, that it divides AC into two equal parts. So this guy and this guy would have to be equal. So in order to prove that, we need to first of all prove that BD has a negative reciprocal slope to AC. So this guy right here. And we'd also need to prove that AD is the same distance as DC. So this is a perpendicular plane video, so let's start with the slopes. First of all, let's find the slope of BD. Actually, it might be a good idea now, guys, to just pause the drop. Get the same answer. 
Um, so we use our slope formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So it doesn't matter which one's y2, whatever. I usually just try to make it positive. So 8 subtract 1 for my y's. 8 subtract 1 divided by 6 subtract 5. Now the only thing we got to remember that if I start with this point for the y, as, that, as that's my y2, y2 subtract y1, then I got to take this as x2. Can't go 8 subtract 1, then 5 subtract 6, because that's what I'm messing with the signs. You got to start with one point and go to the other for both ways. So that's going to be 7 over 1, or just 7. And slope of AC, you could also do AD or uh, DC. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to go AC for the sake of clarity. And in fact, there's a 0 here. That helps me out. So I'm going to go 2, subtract 0, and I started with this point, so i got to go negative 2, subtract 12, so that's going to be 2 over negative 14. Now, an important thing to keep in mind, you might have to reduce a fraction here, so 2 over 14 is the same as 1 over 7, so that's negative 1 over 7. So what do we notice? That should be a 7. This is 7, this is 1 over 7 with a negative, so these guys here are negative reciprocals. So we just proved the perpendicular part of this, of this problem. So now we got to prove the bisector part. So for the bisector part, we got to use our distance formula. The distance formula is equal to, it's sort of like glorified Pythagorean theorem, x2 subtract x1 squared plus y2 subtract y1 squared. I'm not going to write that out. If you want to refer to my formula, uh, my other course, you can or look through your notes. Um, so I'm going to, uh, doesn't, again, it doesn't matter what point you start with. So x2, 5, subtract negative 2. We've got to really be careful with the negatives in this guy. Plus, so I, so I start at this point. So 1, subtract negative 2 squared. And generally, guys, if your answer doesn't work out with these problems, you've done something wrong because usually they'll work out. So that's going to be 7 squared plus 3 squared. Keep in mind that when you're squaring a number, it's always going to be positive. Make sure you use brackets on your TI. Otherwise, it, will, it won't lie to you, but it'll give you a deceiving answer. So I'm going to have 49 plus 9. So that's the square root of 58. So I don't know if that breaks down anymore. Let's see, 58 divided by 4 is, nah, it's not going to work. 58 divided by, I don't think we'll leave it for now. Let's just check the other one. But if you can reduce that square root, then you can. All right, so now we're looking for from D to C. Hopefully I never made a mistake in that last problem. I'm sort of, so let's see. Square 12, subtract 5. I think I did, actually. I think this is a mistake here. I'll go back and get it in a second. 12 subtract 5, and then 1 subtract 0. Like I said, if it doesn't work out, you probably made a mistake, and I kind of see that it doesn't work out there. So this is going to be 7 squared plus 1 squared, which is going to be square root of 50. And this works out here, so 50 is 2 times 25, so that's... I'll write that out. 2 times 25, so that's 5 root 2. Here's my mistake right here. I, uh, let me just fix this. So I went two sub, I went five, subtract negative two, but then I went one, subtract negative two again. I just need to go subtract two. So that makes it a, a lot better, actually. So one squared, and then one, so that gives me 50 instead, which reduces to five root. Accidents do happen. So since they're the same distance, and this, we have negative reciprocal slopes, oops, sorry about that, guys, um, we have a perpendicular bisector. We're going to be looking at when um, you're doing coordinate proofs and you're doing perpendicular. you got to be able to identify key words and understand what they mean. All right, guys, I really hope that this helped. Sorry about the mistake there, but it happens with your studying. 
and I'll see you in class.